this video I'm going to cover our manual S speed sheet and show you an example of how it works. Um, first thing you'll notice is that we have a block up here for project information including the system name. Uh, we have a block over here on the top right for design conditions so that you'll enter your temperatures there. The yellow fields here are active fields that you can input data into. This proposed equipment section is just for you to input your make and model numbers, efficiency ratings from your matchup data, etc. If you're not using air conditioning at all, but someone is asking you to provide a manual S, you would just select no from this drop down menu here. And when you select no, all of the cooling related information on this sheet will be grayed out, similar to what you see here. And the only thing that will be uh, available for you is the heating related information. So we'd have uh, the furnace data down here at the bottom, as well as the manual J heat loss data. But everything else is now grayed out. So we have some manual J load information that we need to input here in these three cells, our heat loss, total cooling BTUs, and sensible cooling BTUs. Um, we're going to tell the spreadsheet whether or not our cooling data from the manufacturer is presented to us uh, in such a way as that we have the detailed cooling capacity specifically for 75 degree dry bulb and 63 degree wet bulb. Uh, there's uh, a lot of manufacturers that don't provide you with that specific piece of information. So if they do provide that for you, then you can choose yes from this drop down and you only have five pieces of data that you need to input. If you do not have that available, then you have a few more pieces of data here. All these yellow cells, you'll have to input something there. Anyhow, so we're going to leave this as no, and in this example, um, we're going to work it as though we do not have access to that data. So speaking of this example, what I've done is taken some performance data and, and pasted it over here just so we could see it. And I'm going to take this capacity information and input it into the spreadsheet. Uh, we also have some, um, some footnotes down here. So before I get down into this section where we have to input capacity information, I'm going to scroll back up to the top and fill in a couple of blanks up here. I'm going to tell the spreadsheet that my outdoor design temperature for summer for Asheville, North Carolina is 86. All right, and um, I'm going to choose 50% for the relative humidity, and I'm going to put in 17 degrees for my wintertime uh, design temperature. And I can say this is the uh, lower level system of a house, or you could say system number one, or wh whatever you want to do there. I'm going to skip all of the uh, proposed equipment information. None of that really needs to be in there for me to illustrate how this sheet works, uh, because it doesn't really tie, tie into anything. I'm going to go ahead and enter a 95% AFUE here. If we wanted to uh, have a furnace, that will come into play. When you look at the detailed matchups of your equipment, sometimes they'll give you a performance chart like this, but if you're using a different air handler than what they have spec'd, then they'll oftentimes give you uh, some correction factors. So you might have a 0.97 or a 0.98. If that information is available to you, then enter it here. If not, just leave this as one. I'm going to make up some numbers for my, my heat loss here. I'm going to say that my heat loss for my building is 50,000 BTUs. My total cooling load is 23,000 BTUs. And out of that 23,000, 20,000 of it is sensible capacity. I'm going to say that the data is not available. And if I look right here, I have 835 BTUs is my adjustment um, that number that I need to put in right there. So there's my 835. And what that's doing, it's adjusting the uh, capacity data here downwards because all of this capacity data is represented to us as though the inside dry bulb of our house is 80 degrees. And we want to know the performance of this equipment when the inside dry bulb is at 75 degrees. So basically what this is going to do is discount the capacity of our equipment by 835 BTUs per 1000 CFM 
per degree less than 80. Um, so it's going to derate the capacity of our equipment for us. I'm going to be reading the CFM uh, or the capacity data off of the 800 CFM line here. So I'm going to enter that in, 800. So basically I'm, I'm entering a two-ton system to see if it will satisfy my load. So uh, the next thing it asked me for is my return air wet bulb. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to pretend that this 63 degree line here is, is not available to me. So I'm going to have to use 67, which is a little bit above it, and 62, which is a little below, so that it can interpolate for me to give me that 63. So I'll put in 67 here and 62 there. The next thing I want to point out is cells C24, where it says 85 in this case, and C35, where it says 95. So what this spreadsheet is doing is it knows that I've selected 86, or I've input 86 as my outdoor design temperature. So if I look over here at my capacity data, I have capacity of my equipment at 85, and I have capacity at 95, but I'm in between those two. So in order for the spreadsheet to interpolate what my capacity would be at 86, I have to enter the data that's on both sides of that. So I need 85 and I also need 95 so that it can interpolate for me. And my spreadsheet tells me that, 85 here and 95 here. So it's directing me uh, as to which column of information I need to use and it'll automatically adjust. So if I change my design temperature to 97, it said, okay, well now you need 95 up here and 105 down here. So it's automatically adjusting for me. So again, this is, this is really helping me complete this sheet and decrease the amount of mistakes that I might otherwise make. Okay, so I, need, I know I need to look in the 85 degree column. So here's my 85 degree column and I'm looking at 800 CFM, 67 degree wet bulb, but I'm wanting the total cooling capacity. So I come over here and I have 24,910. So I'm just gonna go ahead and enter that in. My sensible capacity is 17,490. Go ahead and enter that in. And now I'm gonna come down to the 62 degree wet bulb here. And I have 22,850 and 22,740. All right, so it is interpolated for me between this number and this number and knows that the capacity of my equipment is going to be 23,262. We need to do the same thing down here for the 95 degree chart. So we need to come over here to 95. We're gonna start off with 67 degree wet bulb and enter 23,600 and 17,000 and 21,850 and 21,850. All right, so that is all the input that I needed to do for the cooling section. And what this is doing is it here's the, the output from the top chart, the output from the bottom chart, and then it's going to pull all that information down and interpolate for me. So here I have 86 with an interior dry bulb of 75, 863. My total cooling BTUs is 23,156, which is just slightly above my load. So that's darn near perfect. Um, sensible cooling BTUs, those are 96.1%. So I'm a, I'm a little light on that side, and I'm a little heavy on the latent. Part of what Manual S allows you to do is take half of your excess latent capacity and add it to your sensible, and this spreadsheet is doing that for you. It's basically telling you that half of your excess is 943, and it's going to add that to the sensible capacity here, uh, giving you 19 to 12. If this was undersized, these uh, green cells would actually turn out uh, being red. So the, it will throw uh, flags for you if you've entered data wrong. If any of these sensible heat ratios here are higher than one, it'll turn red, which lets you know that you've entered data backwards here between the total and the sensible. Um, so it's got a lot of um, little built-in uh, flags, so to speak, uh, to help you not make mistakes. 
So down here in this area that's outlined, that's our uh, cooling capacity at our design conditions. And you can see again the percentages right above that. If you enter the heat pump data, let's say that our two ton produces 24,000 at 47 and um, 15,000 at uh, 17. That'll tell us our balance point as well as how many kilowatts of supplemental heat we're gonna need there in order to meet our load. Furnace data, this is a pretty handy section. Um, let's say that you wanted to see what a 40,000 BTU furnace would look like here. Well, you can see it says that it's only 76% of your load. So that obviously would not work, and that's why this is red right here, because it's less than 100% of your load. If we change that to 60,000, now it's telling us that that is 114% of our load. So that's good. Um, it'll also tell you the next size down. So if you thought, well, I'm going to put in a, an 80,000 BTU uh, furnace, and that should do the trick. Um, it'll tell you, well, that 80,000 BTUs is 152% of your heating load. Um, but if you looked at the next size down, which it assumes is 20,000 less on the input side, it's it's basically telling you, hey, uh, you know, a 60,000 BTU furnace would still be 114% of your load. So you know, you should probably consider using a 60,000 BTU furnace instead of the 80, uh, because it's more appropriate from a sizing perspective. All right, so that's, uh, that's the basic gist as far as entering the data in and, and what comes out uh, down here at the bottom. Now, if I did have the data available here, um, as I do actually over here in this chart, I could choose yes from this dropdown and I could come over here and say, okay, well, the information here says 23,080 and 16,750. And this one says 21,860 and 16,270. All right, so that's how you would enter it in if you did have the 63 wet bulb that was matched up with the 75 dry bulb. You do notice down here where these two uh, crosses are, it says that is 75 dry bulb and 63 wet bulb, uh, which is in fact 75 degrees and 50% relative humidity. So um, that's how it, your results would look right there. If, um, if you did have that available, notice everything's grayed out. If you didn't have it available, then that's how your results would look. So um, that's, uh, that's our sheet there. Hopefully that will be a benefit to you. Um, it is available for sale on our website. And um, we also have an option that would include your logo right up here in the top right corner. So um, take a look. If you have any comments, we'd love to hear about it. And um, hope that's been helpful for you.